Future trading involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. Content provided in this segment is meant for educational purposes and is not a solicitation to buy or sell commodities. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Grain Feed, brought to you by EverAg. This is your weekly news feed for all things grain and all things feed. Each week, we bring you updates on the markets with unique perspectives from an amazing team of analysts with the intention of helping dairy and livestock producers manage their risk. I'm your host, Jim Matthews, reporting from the Chicago office on Tuesday morning. We have some folks on the road this week and a big USDA report tomorrow, Wednesday. So we're switching it up a bit. So one of those travelers is joining me today, as always, Director of Feed Procurement, Mr. Jake Kingsley, and returning to the grain feed, EverAg's Director of Grain Market Intelligence, Ms. Shelby Myers. Team, how are we today? Doing well today, Jim. Thank you for asking. Yeah, absolutely. I think spring's trying to trying to come back, so it's exciting. Spring's trying to come back. And for the record, Jake, I do care about how you are doing. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, guys, we have a lot to talk through today because of tomorrow's monthly WASD report from the USDA. So let's get to it. Paige, if you would kindly timestamp the broadcast, it's Tuesday morning. I have to keep reminding myself of that. Markets are mixed heading into tomorrow's report, but mixed coming off of a big week last week for the corn market, especially old crop breaking out of that range it was in. And the meal market recovering very swiftly, especially yesterday as we started the new week. So a tale of two different markets for both corn and meal. But perhaps tomorrow's report could determine the direction of the grain and feed markets moving forward. So Shelby, what is your take on the upcoming WASD report? Yeah, I think, uh, well, normally these are kind of sleeper reports and the news over the last couple of weeks does not indicate the March WASDI is going to be a sleeper. So um, I think, you know, get get on the edge of your seat for what Wednesday is going to bring. Um, if we're, you know, tracking how numbers have progressed, we're certainly going to look at um, for U.S. Old, old crop, how exports are doing since USDA did not touch them in February, which was the big surprise. Uh, I certainly expect USDA to do something this month in the export space. Um, I think we're going to be a little bit moderate on corn exports. Those are uh, likely to lower this month and increase ending stocks. But I think USDA is going to do that moderately just to keep a good pulse and on track with how the export shipments are, are progressing. I do anticipate either a neutral no change or slight increase in soybean exports. Uh, there has been a little bit more activity there, and we're certainly at a reaching a higher pace for new crop uh, global supplies. I, I think we're going to see a cut in Argentina soy, soybean production. Everybody uh, is talking about how the drought keeps getting worse. Uh, there's different report estimates every day about cutting production, and I think USDA is going to have to cut it as well. So. Um, If you remember, in February, we were at 41 million metric tons of soybean production from Argentina. Uh, Certainly expect a cut of production. You know, some estimates are even saying almost 10 million metric ton production cuts of soybean. Um, That's pretty aggressive. So that'll be a get on the edge of your seat moment. And then on Argentina corn, uh, last month, we were at 47 million metric tons. There's talk anywhere from one to five million metric ton cuts there. Um, and, you know, I could definitely see that being the case. I think, too, if we do see as large of a soybean cut, markets will react abruptly. Um, they'll probably work it all out by the end of close, but uh, get ready for screens to, to be a little chaotic. I think the, the sleeper part will be Brazil. They've had such great weather. It's favorable weather. What we really have to keep track of for them is, so what if they harvest all of their record production and continue um, on this path of glorious weather and glorious crop? Um, the logistics of Brazil's harvest are, are very interesting. Where is it all going to go? Does it leave Brazil through exports? Uh, they have very little capacity for storage, and their infrastructure has always been an issue of moving grain. So, you know, the reliability of grain movement is also going to be an issue. They continue to have farmer and trucker strikes and other domestic issues. So 
say we have this really large crop, but then it's got to go somewhere for Brazil. So maybe not uh, any movement for Brazil this month, but def- and you know they can be the sleeper, but we'll keep an eye on them going forward. The other two big pieces, I think, for the next couple of weeks to keep an eye on, um, I don't anticipate any movement in reaction to the report tomorrow on these two issues, but um, just something to keep in mind. We are watching that Black Sea grain deal between Ukraine, Russia, and how that all comes together. Uh, starting, let's see, tomorrow will be the 10-day countdown. And when we get down to the nitty gritty, you know, they have to have a deal. I think markets right now are trying to anticipate whether a deal will or will not happen. It's still kind of early, in my opinion. We got a, 10 days is a lot of time to work out a lot of details uh, when it comes to uh, grain shipment deals. And the other thing, it is March, so prospective plantings are starting to be collected with a sharp decline in fertilizer prices in the U.S. That's really taking pressure off of margins for crop growers. So does this push more acres into corn or at least mean that we'll reach that USDA estimate from the Ag Outlook Forum of 91 million acres? Uh, time will tell, but this is the this is the time that we're talking about it and a lot of buzz about what planted acres will do. Excellent. Thank you for that, Shelby. So as you noted, tomorrow, usually a sleeper. That March WASD report, usually a sleeper because we often get a lot of price action uh, maybe off the January and sometimes February reports. And then you know, moving forward, you have the end of March planning intentions report. That's often a market mover. So this one is usually the snooze before. But like you said, there's a lot of variables for tomorrow's report. The potential shift in old crop corn exports, anticipating cuts there to loosen our balance sheet. But like you said, Shelby, the big numbers, what on earth is the government going to do with the Argentine production numbers on both corn and beans? So that's kind of the big wild card tomorrow and how that affects the global balance sheet. So be on the edge of your seat, like you said, Shelby. You did note the two back burner issues of the Ukrainian and Russian grain export deal. So also coming up. And then the planting intentions report, again, that we referenced at the end of this month. Speaking of that report, Shelby, are you going to have a little preview for us, perhaps via Everag webinar coming up in the next couple of weeks? We are. We're going to do a pre-planting webinar to get get everything settled up before uh, planners hit the ground. So my webinar is going to be March 22nd. It's a noon central start time, so you can come in from uh, doing morning chores, have a webinar about all things grain markets, and get the lowdown on uh, what you need to know ahead of planting, and then head back out for afternoon activities. Awesome. That sounds good. We're very much looking forward to that. So please keep an eye out uh, for links for that webinar. Jake, Shelby kind of gave us the rundown on what to potentially expect for tomorrow and then, of course, the rest of the month of March. What's happening in the physical feed markets here as we head into tomorrow's report? Well, I think we had a, a pretty busy week last week with this big break in corn, trying to get a lot of folks kind of cleaned up and some things priced out, take advantage of that move in the market. And uh, here in Shelby talk about what we could see in tomorrow's WASD and some of the potential cuts to the South American crop there, uh, even with a, maybe a, another little cut to U.S. corn exports, I still think this is a big buying opportunity, particularly in the corn space as far as feed buyers go. Basis has drifted lower over the last couple months. Futures took that big drop uh, last week. They're still hanging around May futures very close to what, 635 or so today, right around the bottom end of the range. And so uh, I think that's a big buying opportunity. You know, get, get maybe the next quarter of your feed booked up in case we don't see as big of a cut as we're hoping for in U.S. exports or, or things get worse in Argentina and we see some out of normal sequence purchases here that could run this thing back up higher. So I think that's number one. And then number two is really looking at the future side of new crop. I think we're, we're looking at some very favorable numbers in corn. And the more I look at it, you know, a 430-ish futures for new crop soybean meal isn't necessarily attractive, but it's a lot better than the 500 numbers we're seeing today. Um, so maybe something to start thinking about if, if Argentina loses as much 
production as they're talking about. And Brazil has a hard time getting stuff to market or keeping it in condition. There, there's starting to be a little more risk there on the table. So we've been preaching patience in that market here for a while. I think you still have to be a little bit proactive. I'm not saying buy the whole crop for next year, but you know, maybe get 10, 15, 25% started on some of this stuff. I think that's the big deal. We're still looking at fiber prices uh, rolling quite a bit lower. I think we can anticipate a little bit more of that as we get through the next 45 days or so as folks in the West get another cutting of alfalfa, start to get their triticale and wheatledge uh, piles packed up and uh, we see less and less demand for alternative fibers like soy holes and wheat mids and and some cotton byproducts. Um, we're seeing those prices continue to roll lower. I think you can be a little more patient and let the market continue to catch up as, as this next fiber crop comes off before we take a chunk out of that one. New crop wise there, I think patience on that one could, could get us a long ways. Um, values are still very firm and have quite a bit of risk premium packed into them, even as they're quite a bit lower than what you could own in the spot market. I think new crop fiber prices have good opportunity to work lower here. So a little bit of patience on that side. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you for that, Jake. Uh, Appreciate the insights there. Before we let you guys go, talked about this before we started filming, we're going to borrow from Kathleen and Phil from the Dairy Download. Bold predictions. Jake bold predictions for tomorrow's WASD report. I think I'm going to go with Shelby here on the higher end of her corn range in Argentina and say they do cut four or five million metric tons there in Argentine corn just to kind of prep the market, I think, as this drought continues to worsen. Okay, so we're going to cut Argentine corn four to five million metric tons. Shelby, bold predictions tomorrow's WASD. Oh, my bold predictions is that USDA is not as bold as the market wants them to be. Uh, We don't cut soybean production nearly as much as uh, market analysts think that it should be cut. And so uh, we'll move from 41 million metric tons of soybeans down to probably 37 million metric tons. I'll I'll do a 4 million million metric ton cut. A 4 million metric ton cut in Argentine soybean production. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, noted. You're both on record. My bold prediction is that they lower Brazilian production for both corn and beans. Mm, I like that one. I like that. Thank you, Jake. Appreciate it. I think it's a bold prediction. Uh, We'll see what happens. Hopefully by the time uh, you watch this video, uh, the WASD report will be coming out and you can judge us based on the numbers you see in that report. And then we'll follow up next week with a recap and see how we did. So. For now, team, excellent work today. A big thanks to Shelby for returning to the show. Always a pleasure to work with you. We'd also like to thank Corey and the Everag Insights crew for their support. Thank you to Paige for her production magic. And thank you to the viewers for watching the Grain Feed. Contact information is on the screen. We greatly appreciate your feedback. That's all for today. See you next time on the Grain Feed.